This is a story of a battle fought over half the globe. After two years of war, Japan still holds her empire. Fighting continues in the Pacific and in Burma. In November 1943, a new Allied command is formed in Southeast Asia, with Admiral Mountbatten as Supreme Commander. For our air forces are our new bases, new squadrons, and a new order of the day. We must establish in Asia a record of Allied air victory of which we can all be proud in the years to come. Let us write it now in the skies over Burma. By the beginning of 1944, we've collected 48 British and 17 American squadrons in Southeast Asia Command, as well as the Indian Air Force and over 100 transport planes. But what counts even more, we've won back air supremacy in Burma. Now we can fly as we like over the 800 mile long jungle front, and all our effort can be turned to helping the troops down below us, among the trees. There is no front line in this blind and treacherous country. Only men hunting one another. Patrols of the British 14th Army have crept forward in the past few weeks down the Arakan in the south, from Kohima in the north. Somewhere between our patrols is a Japanese army strong enough to invade India. But silent, hidden, incalculable. The Japanese are still masters of jungle war. They move so secretly that even our air patrols have failed to find them. And now they are ready for Operation C, to surround and annihilate our divisions on the Burma frontier and then sweep on to Delhi. Operation C will begin in February in the Arakan. Then they will strike at Kohima and Imphal and finish the 14th Army. In the Arakan, at Kohima and Imphal, the 14th Army is surrounded by the deceptive quiet of the jungle. On the ground, the enemy has achieved his first objective. He has surrounded our forward divisions. This tactic of infiltration has never failed the Japanese before, but now they have left the air unguarded, and we can supply, support, and reinforce our army from the sky. Air power is on our side at last. The battle in the Arakan lasts 17 days. The siege of Imphal and Kohima, 80. And every day, 500 tons of life and hope are dropped to our troops between the Japanese guns. No camera has recorded the agony among the trees. 
only the aftermath. The garrisons have held. It is the Japanese who have broken and fled and died. In the monsoon fighting around Imphal and Kohima, we've destroyed three Japanese divisions. And by now, we've enough air haulage in Burma to mount a new offensive. Wingate's second expedition, the airborne Chindits. Operation Thursday. A whole division will be flown into the jungle far behind the enemy lines. On the 5th of March, 1944, it starts. 10,000 men, 1,000 mules, Bulldozers, guns, jeeps, armoured cars, everything bar enter. The aim is to cut Japanese communications with the extreme north, where General Stilwell's troops are fighting through to China. At the best, it isn't going to be easy. General Wingate has said, have no lines of communication on the jungle floor. Bring the goods like Father Christmas down the chimney. But Wingate has died, and so have a lot of his men. The supply drops go on into the monsoon, as columns of exhausted soldiers slog back to base. It hasn't been easy but we've cut the enemy communications for three whole months. We've regained the initiative in Burma. and beyond the battlefield, strategic bomber groups have opened another attack against the enemy's 4,000-mile lifeline to Japan. Targets in Rangoon, Bangkok, Penang, Malaya, Sumatra have been found by reconnaissance planes and struck at by long-range bombers and carrier task forces. By the end of the year, the 14th Army is pushing eastward through the mountains towards the plains of central Burma. This is the beginning of the longest road back in all the war.
March 1945. In a long and savage battle, the 14th Army takes the Japanese stronghold of Mictilla. Now the troops of four continents, British, American, African, Indian, are on the road to Rangoon, and nearly half a million of them depend on air supply. The Supremo knows we're running short of time. The monsoon's due to break within a month, and we're still a long way inland from Rangoon. To finish the job, we have to stage another show, Operation Dracula. Rangoon's the key to Burma, its port and capital. We must take it at once if we're to hold the country and supply our troops throughout the rains. As the army pushes on, the heavies begin smacking at Rangoon's defences. Operation Dracula's laid on at top speed. After the bombing, airborne and seaborne forces will land on the coast just south of the city with tactical air support. D-Day is May the 1st. according to plan, but the enemy has pulled out. Rangoon is ours, and as the stores pile in, the Japanese CNC radios Mountbatten. I beg to inform your excellency that I have passed order to cease fire to all Japanese forces with which I am in contact. Burma is all ours now, and the weather's ours too. We might have brought it from home. By the beginning of 1945, the Indian Ocean was secure and a British fleet moved into the Pacific. Now the carriers sail north to join the American fleet off Okinawa, less than 400 miles from Japan. The Japanese Empire is shrinking and a global war stretches to its last extremes. Okinawa will be the greatest of Pacific landings. Carrier planes will cover the American 10th Army and the 1,300 craft that take it ashore. The U.S. Pacific Fleet has grown from one carrier to a hundred and has fought its way battle by battle from the Solomons to the Philippines. Our flat tops with their broods of fighters and torpedo bombers have rubbed out the Japanese Navy as a fighting force. They've covered more amphibious landings than they can remember and evolved a pattern that's quite a science by now. First, you knock down all the enemy aviation for miles around. Then you slug the beach with naval guns. Then you hit it with all the planes and guns and rockets you've got while the Amtraks wade ashore. That's how it is now at Okinawa. close in, Japanese resistance grows more fanatical. Admiral Arima has made the first kamikaze attack, and now 2,000 suicide pilots prepare to crash to death on the Allied fleet. For them, immortality, and for their country, a last hope thrown across despair.
This attack costs us our highest casualties ever. 500 ships sunk or damaged, 5,000 men killed, 5,000 wounded. But we're still in business. We take Okinawa. Okinawa becomes another of the many names for death. Bougainville, Buna, Rabaul, Majoro, Mindanao, Eniwetok, Brunei, Balikpapan, Palawan, Tarakan, Tarawa, Iwo Jima, Saipan. The attackers are Americans, Australians, New Zealanders, British. The defenders, always Japanese and always stubborn. Science is fighting it out with superstition and the account is written in blood across the ocean called Pacific. Now at last the road to Japan is open and we've the strength to take it. The B-29s, the super forts, move forward to bases in the Marianas within striking distance of Tokyo. The secret of this job is to have enough machinery in the right place at the right time and the men to handle it. So our bomber crews set up house by the Blue Lagoon. In the past few months, our B-29s have made over 30,000 sorties against Japan. First, they drop leaflets to warn each city when its time has come. Then they drop bombs. Their bomb loads mostly incendiaries. Japanese towns burn fine. Tokyo and Yokohama are half destroyed, and high above several dozen other cities, our bombers give birth to death. Our crews aren't kamikaze fanatics, they're just guys you might see around any place, doing what they reckon has to be done to end the war. They don't think much about the impact of West on East. Since we took Iwo Jima and had fleet bases in the Philippines, Allied fighters have been able to reach Japan. As well as protecting the bombers, they strafe ground targets, any ground targets. When you've been through the Pacific, anything Japanese counts as enemy. Bombers set course for base, the fighters home back to their carriers. bombers have a longer ride, 1,300 miles, back to the Marianas. For shot-up planes, we've a new emergency landing strip at Iwo Jima, half that distance. 
Taking Iwo cost the Marines 5,000 dead, but to our wounded bomber crews, it's paying off. told, the bombing of Japan has cost us 3,000 bombers and their crews. The war in the East has reached new limits of destruction. Then, on the 6th of August, 1945, one solitary B-29 goes out with a different kind of bomb. Its target, Hiroshima. On August the 9th, the last salvos are fired. As a second atomic bomb falls on Nagasaki, the United States fleet enters Tokyo Bay and Japan surrenders. The West has mastered the East. The world is at peace, but older and sadder than it was. The heart has gone out of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, and only the polluted air stirs among the ruins. <laughs> 